Hey guys, Jason. Here recently I got a new computer for Christmas, so I took apart an old computer that I have and put a GPU in it. But it kind of, I've got a lot of people emailing me, you know, YouTubing me, asking me, you know, how do you really build a miner, a true miner, you know, from scratch? And it's been, you know, been really a, a purpose of mine I've always wanted to do. But one of the issues I ran into, and many of you probably heard this story, um, at the beginning of 2012, around January, me and my father tried to build a computer, and we got a defective motherboard, and the motherboard caught fire. And so that was kind of the last time we ever built a computer. We've always kind of bought stock computers. But for the first time since 2012, I am going to be building a computer. Now, you might notice I don't have a case here. We're going to go with an open case design that me and my dad are going to build on to later. So I'm going to go through the parts, explain some stuff. I will make one note. I have a GPU here that actually ended up being a NVIDIA graphic card. And you don't really use NVIDIA graphic cards on mining. Um, it was an error in the ordering process. So I got to send that back. But all of our parts are good. So let's get into it. I got my CPU, which with when you're, when you're mining, you don't really need the best CPU. You just need something decent and cheap. I think this cost me like 40 bucks. You're, you're looking for something cheap, but it's also reliable. And I went with Intel. Um, there's an option you can do. You can do a HDD or an SDD. Now, a lot of people in the mining community are more pro SDD than they are HDD. But for me, it, it, it's just kind of, it was, first of all, it was cheaper, about 10 bucks cheaper. Even though I know you can get really small SDDs, I wanted something of, you know, of a higher caliber. I believe this is a 250 gig. Yep, 250 gig hard drive. So it's a decent sized hard drive. It's going to really reliably, you know, work for me. It's a Western Digital, which is everybody knows they make, you know, they're, they're the default, you know, user's choice for putting them inside a computer. It's pretty decent. It should hold up. And I recommend an HDD, but really it's a personal choice. Put this over here. Now this is a little stupid piece a lot of people are going to laugh at me about. But my motherboard, I didn't know, had a start button. And if you have a computer that doesn't have a start button on the motherboard, you'll know it's very hard to start. You have to get a screwdriver and you know basically allow le the electricity to flow through two pins so it starts the computer up. I don't like doing that. It seems kind of dangerous. So for $3.99, I got this little starter plug. This plugs into your little port that your um, start button would on your case. And then it plug, you just press the button and turn it on. It's really nice. I probably won't get using it too very much because this motherboard actually has a start button built right in. But that's just a nice little thing. I have my, I believe, 8 gigs of RAM. Yeah, 2, 4, 6 of RAM. So I'm really, really excited about this. It'll be really nice RAM. Um, again, I'm not looking for the best, but 8 gigs of RAM is usually recommended for mining setups because this um, motherboard can actually support up to 5 GPUs. Um, I think it's five. I think maybe six. Five or six. I, I, it might be six. And because Windows 8.1 actually supports six GPUs versus Windows 7 supporting five GPUs. So also, you know, you want enough RAM to be able to support those maximum amount of GPUs. I got a Windows 8. Point, actually, this might be a Windows 7. No, this is a Windows 8.1. I couldn't remember what I got. Windows 8.1 starter disk, and this is just um, the, what they what they would do if they were building a computer. They would install it on your computer for you. So I got that. A lot of people in the mining community whether it would rather use Linux or use a special distro made for mining. Myself personally, if I'm going to build the, build the computer, put money into a system, you know, one of the people things people always talk about is you know how liquidable is your system. You know, if you have six or seven computers, you know, and if you know, this is never going to happen. But if all the cryptocurrencies just plummeted tomorrow. You want to be able to resell parts of your computer. And one of the things that just having Windows is nice. Also, I'm used to using CG Miner, and CG Miner is the best fit for Windows. So that's always an extra bonus. And last but not least, I got my mo Ooh, ooh that was kind of loud. I got my motherboard, which has all the cool stuff here. Really sweet. I think it has, yeah, it has RAM and everything. I mean, it's, it's a really nice system setup. It'll end up working really, really well. So this will be really, really great. We'll get this set up. And then, like I said, I got my GPU. I actually, I don't even know how I got this, but I got a 760, and I tried to order a R9 270X, which is what I have in that other mining computer that I'm working on. So I'll set this GPU off to the side. I'd like to get this stuff open and kind of show you guys what's going on here. So I'm going to move some of the non-essential, well, they're all essential, but the parts that aren't you know, in first priority over to the side here. And I am going to open up this box. Now, I'm going to have to be this kind of awkwardly because I want the user, yourself, to see what I'm doing. Now, when people ask, you know, what kind, of, what kind of motherboard should you get and why? And for me, first of all, you need a motherboard that can support, depending on what your preference. You know, if you're buying, building a computer just to mine with one GPU, 
which I don't usually recommend unless it's a price factor that limits you, you know, then yeah, you're just getting a computer that, you know, you, you probably want, if you're just getting one GPU, you're building a computer that can also multitask as a, you know, personal computer for any of the means you'd wish. Now, if you're building a computer that can, you know, handle six GPUs, obviously those GPUs you're going to be using expander ports, and because of those expander, or not ports, but kind of expander lines, um, they look kind of like this, but they're a lot bigger. And what they'll do is they'll, um, X16 slots is, are designed for a lot more data, for like graphic cards, well obviously, but for like, um, you know, gaming or something, or something high intensity. Where mining doesn't really have a huge data flow, it's more about processing, capa capa ca processing capability. And so, you know, when you're building a computer, you have to take those into effect. You know, what, what is your preference? What are you looking for to mine? Uh, for me, um, the other computer over there already has um, one X16 slot and it has two X1s. And with building this computer, it's going to be an open computer, you know, it's going to be basically an open rig setup. So I want the potential to eventually have a very large, you know, up to six GPUs. So I don't want to damage this beauty, but let's try to pull it. And there's nothing else in the box besides those cords. So I'll put this box on the ground. Now, another thing a lot of people, I know what you're thinking, you watch my setup, you're thinking, what are you going to do? You don't have a PSU. Uh, I have a PSU over there that's actually 650 watts, and I have a PSU that I use from an old computer that I got rid of that's 550 watts. So I'm going to swap that with my current mining rig and use the 600 watt over here for this setup. Eventually, of course, though, when I put more of the, you know, um, brain freeze, when I put more of the GPUs onto the system, I'm going to eventually have to have, you know, a good setup. I mean, I'm going to have to have a better PSU. And that's another problem you got to look into is power draw from an outlet and from an outlet, you know, line. Because I think certain outlets are all tied together on a breaker, so you got to watch that for that too. Anyway, I'm not an electricity expert, so don't take me on key for all these things. Anyway, this is the baby itself. Very, very nice. They always put these in anti-static bags. And they, always, they always say you should ground yourself, but so I'll touch, touch some metal down here. Because the last thing I'd like to do is the static electricity off my hands to fry this computer. That would be really, really bad. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, I hope this isn't too loud for the user here on this crumbling, but a lot of people ask me how do open rigs work. I'm going to do a whole series on how to build an open rig. Honestly, I was going to buy one called, from a, like an open rig company that was in South Africa or something like that, and I just feel bad because it was going to cost me like $200 with shipping, and obviously, you know, that's not worth the price, you know, when you do all the shipping calculations and everything. So I'm going to pull this baby out, and I don't want to damage the parts underneath, but very sexy piece you can see here. So the only thing I'm currently worrying about, and this might become an issue, is the fact that I do not have four sticks of RAM. I only have two of four gigabytes a piece. Oh man, this has a new computer smell to it. And the only thing that fears me about that is sometimes you have to fill all the slots, and I don't know how this motherboard handles. So I might have to go out and get another eight gigs of RAM. You know, two four slot gigs. So, yeah, just reading. This actually has, oh, that's nice. They have six um, SATA ports on it. But anyway, without further ado, I'll kind of show off some other parts. We got our hard drive here, which is just a very basic hard drive. But like I said, 250 gigs. And this will just get, I, there's no point even open this because I'll have to connect this later when I build it. But this will connect via an eSATA cable to this computer, which will be really, really nice. Got my CPU, and this actually comes with a fan as well, and then a heat sink, as it tells you. I got my RAM. But if you don't notice, and maybe I'll pull this back up so you guys can see, there is a nice big power button right there for me. So that is very nice. It'll come in very, very handy, because obviously I'm gonna need some way to start it, and I won't need the power initiation button. So I am going to open this RAM right on up. Ooh, don't they just look nice? I just love how RAM looks sometimes. You know, it's just so pretty. Anyway, RAM's very simple. I'll move the CPU so you can see. Literally, all you do is you just, if you know anything about a computer, you know how to put RAM in. You just open the pins up. And you just slide it down. 
And one of the fears I have... Nope. Okay, I was, I was kind of worried that they weren't going to sit next to each other. And one thing I want to do too is make sure I got it in the right way. Again, I'm not a computer building expert, so I don't know which way they go. It, you guys, I, I know you're probably thinking I'm pretty stupid, but you know, a lot of people ask me, how does the average person build one? I'm an average guy, so I'm just trying to show you guys how to build it. Um, let's look at my, is it a gigabyte motherboard? Really? This looks so unprofessional. <laughs> yeah, it's a gigabyte motherboard. Wow. You want to tell me how to put the RAM in? What way? I have, honestly, you'd think they would like have some very simple, hey, put the RAM in this way. So guys, I'll just pause it right here and I'll get back when I figure out what to do. Okay guys, so I messed around. I figured out they actually, they face the front, which is very easy, very quick to figure out. One of the things I'm worried about is, ooh, these things on the bottom are very sharp and I don't want to damage any of them. But you know, you can actually see the pathways, which I just think is so interesting. It actually follows. Very, very intriguing indeed. But anyway, we got the RAM on. Quite excited now. Got my little start button. That's the cool part, is the start button. It's going to make things so much easier. We got our PCI Express slots. Pretty sweet. Got some kind of... um number code thing here. I don't know what it does, but it seems pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Okay guys, now we're going to put the CPU on. So I'm going to open it. I already opened the box, but I'm going to open it up. And like I said previously, it came with a fan, which, which is really nice because, you know, they have to, it would, if you had to buy a fan separately, you know, that would really stink. Now I know people are probably thinking, you know, all computers come with a fan by default. Or not computers, but CPUs. Well, they might, but it makes it a lot nicer that they actually provide one for you. So, ooh. you know, it's strange to think that this little thing has so much process. This little chip can do so much data processing. You know, the technology that we have nowadays is just so magnificently crazy. It's, it really is. It's crazy. Okay, so I got the CPU out of the box. It comes with a fan, and I was freaking out because I didn't see any thermal paste. So I did some research, and it already has the thermal paste pre-applied. Thermal paste is a very, very big deal. If you don't have it on your CPU pre-installed, you need it. It's a huge, huge issue. So anyway, now that I know it's pre-applied, I'm not so worried, I'm safe, we're ready to go. So um, we had to open up the port on our CPU, on our computer. So what we're going to do is this piece just goes down. I'm trying hard to do this and try to show you guys. And it just pulls up and then just pushes down. And this little crate opens up, and out comes this, the little placeholder. Now, man, that looks beautiful. That's just that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I am going to apply the CPU to the crate. Okay guys, after a lot of confusion I got this. The CPU I put in, I replaced it with the little placeholder, but I was really afraid because it was really, really hard to put in and I had to check their instructions to make sure I was doing it right because I didn't want to screw up and you know, mess up my CPU and my motherboard. So anyway, I got that on and then the fan already has it on. So I put the fan on, got it connected to the power supply that connects to the motherboard and it's ready to go. The fan looks really, really nice and it's all sturdy. It holds, so when you do this, it's not gonna fall. You know what I mean? Of course, we're not going to be doing that, but it's set and ready to go. So we got the CPU on and the CPU fan.